Hey, this is Chris. We are taking a look at the math portion of the June 2023 ACT. And here we're going to do questions 21 through 40. And just like we did in our first video of the first 20 questions, a lot of my students have asked me if I could demonstrate how I would go through a section if I were actually taking the test. So this is going to be kind of a what would Chris do <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, little insight into the way that I would approach these questions, what kinds of things would I write out, what kinds of things would I try to do in my head, you know, what kinds of things would I use calculator for, when would I apply a strategy like plugging in an answer choice or something. So uh, these questions are going to be new to me, so I might stumble around a bit or even miss a couple, um, but we're just going to kind of fly through and, you know, hopefully get some insight into the way a test prep instructor might see uh, the test when looking at it fresh. So here we go. Uh, for 21, here we see this stem and leaf table. And they want to know the probability that a long jump participant chosen at random will have jumped at least 75. So that means 75 or above. So that would be these results in here. Seven as your stem with a leaf of seven means like 77, 78, 79 and then 80, 81, and 82. So there are a total of six results out of those extra four, 10 total, so it'd be six tenths for that. All right, let's take a look at 22. Here in the figure, they wanna know the measure of CAB, so that's this one, that's what we're trying to find. GBA is 50. And they tell us these two lines are parallel, so anytime we can transfer info, I always try to do that right away. So that would also be 50. GCA is 120, which means that would be 60 in here. That's also 60 up here. So 50 and 60 is 110. All this is 180. 180 minus 110 is 70. Gabe will use one fluid ounce of fertilizer for every 30 square feet of soil. At this rate, how much fertilizer to the nearest gallon? will give use for 0.8 acres. So here we have to do a few conversions. So here for the first one, 0 0.8 times 43,560 would give us, so 0.8 acres is uh, 34,848 square feet. <clears throat> and then one hundredth of a gallon would just be, uh, if you divide the ounces by a hundred, that would be 1.28 ounces. So I'm just jot that down there. <clears throat> and then let's see. So for 30 square feet of soil, um, he uses one ounce. So then here, one ounce for 30 square feet. will be x ounces for 34, 848 square feet. So here when you cross multiply, you're going to get 34,848 divided by 30. So that would be about 1100 ounces, 1161.6 ounces. And then to convert that into gallons so here oh whoops it says nearest 0 0.01 gallon i thought it was saying that's an amount of gallons so that conversion i did earlier didn't even matter okay see learn something new every day all right but when we apply this to our next conversion we get 1161.6 ounces is x gallons and then we get that 128 ounces is one gallon. So we cross multiply here and solve. We get 9.075 or 9.08. All right. That was a kind of tricky conversion one, especially if we're only being question 23. All right, let's take a look at 24. Dre's score is two points higher than Misha. Our score is just to compare how many points higher. So. Yeah, if you're two points higher on every single test, then that just means your average will be two points higher overall. 
It's kind of a trick question there, but if you understand averages from a conceptual standpoint, that's not bad. All right. So if it's 0.7 times a certain number of free throws, you're hoping to have 18 successes. And if you did 18 divided by 0.7, at 25.7 so the big question here is what that's actually going to look like and technically this is actually going to be an inequality it's not really that it's equal to 18 but it's at least 18 so that means it could be greater than or equal to 18 so x would have to be greater than or equal to 25.7 which means if it takes you 25.7 free throw attempts, it really includes that 26th. So that's a kind of tricky one there that I could see people picking either B or C for that. <clears throat> Geometric just means we're multiplying. So here it looks like we're multiplying by, uh, for each one, three-fourths. So that's J. Wait, I didn't read that one carefully. Let me just go back real quick. Yep, common ratio. Okay, good. Um, a, B, C. Probability selected number will be an element of set B and an element of set C. So that would only include the six. So if you're selecting, that's one result out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one out of nine. Regression line, a line of best fit just means that it's the best approximation or representation of the data in the scatter plot shown. Here they give you an equation of that so you know exact values for slope and y-intercept. So let's see. Um, predicted number of seeds for a pumpkin weighing 27 pounds. So you're doing 15 times 27 using that equation and then adding on that intercept. And that's going to give you, it should be right around 700. Yep, 699. Okay. And that one I did use calculator for just as an FYI. You don't, you know, doing mental math is great if it saves time, but if they're giving you exact numbers like you see in the answer choices here, then you want to make sure you're doing an exact calculation. Now for 29, one of the pumpkins is removed from the group of 23. The average number for the remaining 22 is 10 fewer than it was for all 23. How many seeds were in? Um, the removed pumpkin. Okay, so this one basically, <clears throat> um, they say that uh, the average weight was 10, and average number of seeds was 444. Okay, and so here we're talking about average number of seeds. Gotcha. All right, so here for those 23 results, we had... 444 and for the 22 results so now when we divide by 22 we're getting an average number of seeds what did they say 10 fewer yet yeah, 10 fewer so here this would be 434 versus when you were dividing by 23 it was 444 And so you can see the difference in those sums. 434 times 22 is 9548. So this one's 9548 for the sum. Those 22 pumpkins. And 444 times 23 gives you 10,212 for those 23 pumpkins. So that difference would be 664, which is answer choice E on that. I think it said the average weight was 10. So 10 pounds, X number of kilograms, one pound, 0.45. So that'll be 4.5. All right, so you can just try some values here for this. Let's try six. 
they want to know which of the three expressions below must equal an even number. So if n is 6, that would be 3, 12, and root 6. So 2n has to be an even number, and that's the only one. We don't even have to try any other number. That worked out nice. Okay, so this is 200 feet along the ground. Here's our tower. Angle of elevation is this angle over here, 50 degrees. And the height of the tower. So we're trying to find this. So here we would probably use tangent. So tangent 50 is going to be your opposite over your adjacent. So that would be 200 times 1.2 would be 240. ABC is 87 for this whole thing. ABE is 68, so that means this little piece in here is 19. DBC is 52, so that means that this part in here is going to be 35 for that missing piece. And then DBE would be that difference, which here would be 33. So anytime you make this number out front, the mantissa, if you make that smaller, you make your exponent larger. So this would be a plus two when you move that over two digits or two decimal places rather. All right. All right, so Ed equals Sarah on this. All right, let's see how we want to set this up. It says members pay 40 bucks and then they get the member pricing. Okay, so they bought 10 pairs of shoes. Oh no, sorry, P pairs of shoes. We have to find P. Okay, so for Ed as the member, it's gonna be 40 plus $90 per pair of shoes for that member, so 90 times a certain number of pair of shoes. And that's gotta equal Sarah's, which is just gonna be 100P. She didn't have to pay the membership fee. So that's 10p equals 40, p equals 4. All right, let's do this non member pricing. So two hats for a non member would be 24 bucks. Two water bottles for a non member, 30 bucks. One workout bag for a non member would be 27 bucks. So we add that all up, and then average cost per item means you're dividing by the total number of items, which is five items. So here that's 54 and 27 is 81 over five is right around 16. 100 water bottles to members each year. It's predicted that for every 50% decrease in the member price, they will sell 10 more. They decide to lower the member price to $10. Let's see what it is now. Member price for, what are we talking? Water bottles. Okay. So here, it's currently 15. I'm just gonna put that here so I don't have to scroll around on you guys. So here, they're doing 100 water bottles at 15 each. So they're getting 1,500 a year off their water bottles. Every 50% decrease means they sell 10 more. So if they decrease it by $5, so that's like 10 50 cent decreases, so it means they'll sell 100 more. So they'd be doing 10 and then times 200. So they should be making 2,000. All right. Based on the prediction excluding the one-time fee, what will be the total revenue from the water bottle sold to members the year following? Total revenue. Uh-oh, I don't see my answer there so maybe I didn't read that carefully a hundred to members member price oh I did non member price oopsie member price is 14 so they're currently doing 14 and having 1400 and then now at their new price of 10 so they're only doing 
that reduction of 50 cents by four dollars, so it's eight. So that would be 80 more, so it's 10 times 180 it would be 1800. Yep, gotta make sure we read carefully. It's for members on this one. Good catch on that, that was almost a careless mistake. All right, here we're just multiplying this out. Um, two to the sixth power um, times 10. So let's see, two to the six, uh, 64 times 10, so that's gonna be 640. And then you'll have x to the sixth and y squared. Uh, this one, area. So here, your area of a triangle is just going to be one half base times height. And you can look at that in a variety of ways, uh, but I think that using the coordinates here, the easiest way to do that is use this as your height because they have the same x, so between 10 and 4, that side is going to be 6. And then here, that difference in your x's. So we don't really care about the angle, but you're going from 1 over to 8. So that's going to mean that this would be 7. And so that would be 42. Half that's 21. So yeah, it is sometimes tricky when they have triangles at an angle. But remember, base and height, that relationship is that they will always be perpendicular. And which of the following expressions? is undefined. Um, so here to make something undefined, it just means that um, you can't have a zero in a denominator. And if you happen to know unit circle, you might not have to do a calculation on this, but sine of zero would be zero and one over zero would be undefined. And so that's it up through 40. And we'll do another video in our series where we finish out this section, diving into some of the tougher questions here in the ACT math from the June 23 test. Thanks for watching. Thank you.